Okay, I have 10 o'clock on my watch. So I went ahead and started to record the meeting. Again, welcome to the 325. Oh, just a reminder to mute. Good day, I'm looking at you. Live from a- All right, I'll mute you. Um, welcome to the Sacramento County Public Health Media Briefing for March 25th. As a reminder to everyone, please mute while we go through the briefing and then you'll have a chance to ask questions afterwards. Um, glad to all have you here in the right spot this week. I apologize for those of you that missed out last week because of the link issue, but it looks like everyone's here now. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to our public health officer, Dr. Kassirie, to give an update as to where we are right now with our COVID response. And you'll also hear from a handful of other public health staff on various aspects of our COVID response. And then we will go into the question and answer session. Dr. Kassirie. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us again. So with the numbers, um, and these are numbers from last night, uh, we are at 96,616 cases of COVID-19 reported to Sacramento County and 1,590 deaths. We are averaging about 106 uh, new cases reported per day. And uh, right now, according to our dashboard, the um, the case rate is at 6.8 per 100,000. Action we're going to get today. Um, according to the blueprint dashboard, which determines the tier that we are in, the update this week is that uh, our case rate is at 7.4 7 per 100,000. And uh, just to note that the reason there's a difference between what the blueprint shows and what uh, we have on our dashboard is that the blueprint does have a seven day lag. So uh, our, our dashboard shows uh, more of an up-to-date number, but we have to go by the blueprint uh, for determining the tier status. Our pro positivity rate was at 2.9%. Uh, and in the health equity quartile at 4.2%. So according to these numbers, we are still in the red tier and we continue to monitor to see uh, when we will be able to meet the criteria for the orange tier. Um, another big development is um, with uh, our contract with uh, Blue Shield. Uh, we've been talking for a while about the fact that that was an upcoming change where we will be working with Blue Shield as well as the state of California in terms of um, allocation of our vaccine. And so that uh, process uh, is taking place right now. We're in the process of uh, turning over to work with uh, Blue Shield. And we have signed an MOU with the state that will allow us to be able to continue getting vaccine through this process. We will have more details as to how the new process will work. We're still working out those details. So for today, we do have several members of our uh, staff who will be providing updates. We have Rachel Allen who will give an update about vaccine and uh, Hannah Alborg that will give an update about Cal Expo. Uh, just to note that we are one year since the date that we first opened Cal Expo. Initially it was for a drive-through uh, testing site and now it's been converted to a drive-through vaccine site and we are making additional transitions that Hannah will talk about. And then we will have Mike Way talk about our health equity plan and how we plan to reach out to underserved communities um, to provide access to vaccine. So Rachel. Hey, good morning. Um, just have a quick update with this week's numbers. We did receive our allocation numbers last night from CDPH. Uh, so for this week, Sacramento County is going to receive 25,310 doses of COVID vaccine. Uh, that's 15,210 Pfizer. 8,500 Moderna and 1,600 Johnson and Johnson. Um, and so we'll, we are continuing to allocate. We are working with Blue Shield over the next couple of weeks uh, for that transition, but for the next few weeks, we're still doing the allocation. Um, and so, you know, getting those out to the providers that, that it's most appropriate. Um, we did receive an increased allocation because the algorithm has changed and is including more of the adult population as we move towards um, hopefully 
being able to vaccinate more of the general public. Um, there was uh, just one other change this week. Um, the state had given us guidance um, that they we've been trying to increase vaccination rates for those that are hardest hit by COVID. And so uh, the guidance from the state was to give 40% of doses to zip codes that are in the lowest quartile of the Healthy Places Index. Um, and so the, um, the guidance that was released yesterday uh, it encourages providers to continue to prioritize eligible persons in those um, uh, HPI quartiles, but it's also giving providers the discretion to vaccinate, uh, and it says those who live in high impact areas, including families, and that is for both the uh, quartiles one and two of the Healthy Places Index. So that's going to give our providers working in those areas a little more latitude uh, to use discretion to uh, begin vaccinating others in that community. And I'm going to turn it over to Hannah. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm coming broadcasting live from Cal Expo. As Dr. Kasiri mentioned, we're celebrating our one year anniversary from being on site. Uh, just wanted to give you a brief update. I know you have seen uh, the information released from our public information officers on the transition of Cal Expo. As you know, Sacramento County Public Health has run a drive through vaccination site here at the Cal Expo location when we did a soft launch on January 7th. Uh, currently, the Cal Expo site has completed over 43,000 first and second doses and will continue to offer second doses through April 16th. Over the next three weeks, Sacramento County Public Health will transition the Cal Expo site to our partner, Curative, who currently also runs the large drive through vaccination site at McClellan. Uh, for the transition, uh, the Cal Expo site will stop first doses. We have stopped those um, last Friday, but we will continue to do second doses through April 16th. Um, so if you're wondering why we're making this transition, as Dr. Casirier and Rachel have both mentioned, um, we're transitioning this site because Cal Expo has already been an established location. So we're able to bring Curative in to continue to run this location, where then we'll be able to move our public health resources to be able to set up other locations throughout the county and to be able to serve those that we have not been able to get to. Um, one quick Note uh, is that we still have over 10,000 second doses to complete by April 16th. So by no means are we shut down and we will continue to see those who um, receive their first dose through here. And I just would like to make a quick mention that um, we've had a wonderful partnership and collaboration working alongside the Air uh, and Army National Guard, the State Guard and the Sacramento County Medical Reserve Corps at our drive-through site that has done both uh, testing, which saw over 60,000 people swabbed, and then now vaccination, which will probably topple over 40, uh, 50,000. So this is a noteworthy group of men and women that we've been able to work alongside with and build uh, relationships with, and we will continue to do those into the future and be able to serve the Sacramento County community. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Way. Um, so I, with health equity updates, um, what we have been doing, as my colleague Rachel mentioned, is leveraging a lot on the Healthy Place Index Quartile 1. And it's more nuanced in the sense where we're leveraging um, the expertise and wisdoms of community-based organizations, which I'm going to utilize the acronym CBOs, um, and other community partners to really do a targeted outreach. We understand that there are many um, barriers, I guess, for a lot of disproportionately impacted individuals, including transportation, language, um, and other resources. Thus, we have um, partnered with 211 and Sacramento uh, Regional Transit to eliminate some of those digital barriers to make it more inclusive and accessible for community members to access um, within those community clinics. Um, leveraging, um, leveraging the community CBOs and community partners, we've been tar doing a targeted outreach um, in the particular zip codes such as South Sacramento, Del Paso Heights, Oak Park, to really um, ensure that individuals who face these um, barriers have equitable access. Um, so with that said, um, there has also been discussion about this larger output of in South Sacramento for doing a, a mass vaccination site that is still in the planning um, and we're working out the logistics and details. In the meantime, we are still continuing to work 
and leverage with a lot of the trusted messengers within the community to find ways in which we can make it more inclusive and equitable um, to vaccine resource allocation. Great, thank you, Mike. Um, and thank you to all of our presenters. Um, so we can move now into the question and answer period. We have a much larger group today than we did last week. So I'd like to utilize the raise your hand feature on Zoom um, and I will call on you. When you ask your question, please first identify your name and your outlet before asking your question. And then our public health staff will respond to your question. Um, so I will look for hands that are raised for anyone who has a question for our panel. Don't be shy. I don't see any hands raised. Does anyone have any follow-up questions to the presentation today? If not, I will take that as a sign that we provided the most updated hold information. Hold on. Um, okay, I see um, Chris Hagen from CAP Radio. Go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, Dr. Casario, you mentioned obviously we're not in the orange tier metrics currently. I was wondering if your office had any idea when we might meet um, those requirements. Good question. We get that uh, question daily because, of course, that will mean that more businesses will be able to open up. Of course, we don't know for sure. Uh, there are a number of factors that uh, will determine that. One factor is the fact that the state has set up a system where if we do hit the goal of 4 million va uh, vaccinations in the uh, uh, health, uh, pl Healthy Places Quartile 1, then uh, the threshold for entering the orange tier will change. Uh, the case rate will change from a four to six. Uh, right now, as I mentioned, we are at 7.4 based on the, uh, the uh, blueprint. So it will still be a few weeks before we even get to the point of um, even thinking about it uh, getting to six. Uh, the good thing is that uh, our numbers continue to go down steadily. So in my best guess estimate is that probably sometime uh, late April, we will be able to get uh, meet the criteria for the orange tier. Okay, next we have uh, Chelsea Shannon from ABC 10. So this week we received a increased supply of vaccines. Is that something we should expect for the next coming weeks? You know, I don't think we've been given a guarantee. I think we're close to seeing an, you know, an increased supply, but we are always told that our allocation will stay fairly steady. So I'm hopeful. Dr. Kassirier, do you, you have any more information about that increasing? Uh, we, we don't know. We, we, it, of course, because the allocation is made on a weekly basis, but this is a good sign. Um, we have been told that the state is changing the way that they are making their allocation and basing it on adult population. So that might uh, give an advantage to us to be able to get more vaccine, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, next up is Tony Sacramento B. Tony, are you there? We cannot hear you, although I see you're no longer on mute. Okay. No? Oh, there oh. he is. Okay, go ahead, Tony. Um, what's the chances that we in our county would be in a position in beginning of May to say we have, um, we can open uh, vaccination availability to everybody, every adult? We know that at the federal level, uh, President Biden has uh, set a goal that by May 1st, uh, eligibility will open up to all adults in the United States. And I know that uh, California is working towards that goal as well. So we do expect that there will be an announcement, but I do not have details as to when that will be. But I think in preparation for that, that is why the allocation uh, has been changed to be based on adult population. Okay, hey, next up we have Sasan Moore from Sacramento Bee. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, can we say 
with certainty that students, uh, K through 12 students will be wearing masks in the fall. Our expectation is that as long as we still have the virus um, circulating in the community, masks will be a requirement. So uh, our expectation is that in the fall, the mask will still be required. Okay, and then Chelsea, you have a follow-up question? Um, sorry, this, this one comes from, is it difficult to, um, for the county to, knowing that you don't have control over the vaccine supply um, with the fact that California continues to lag behind other states in vaccinations? I'm sorry, I, I don't think I got the question very well. I can take a stab at that one, Dr. K. Uh -huh. my, name, my name is Jamie White. I'm the incident commander for the response. Um, so I, I think through this whole pandemic, our team has really learned to be very flexible. There's been lots of changes um, throughout the pandemic and we've had to adapt and our team has done that very, very well. Um, and so what we do is we plan for the best case scenario. Um, and then our goal is to be able to dispense all of the vaccine that's given to us. So that's our, that's our goal is whatever amount is given to us is to get that out into the community and get that out into people. I don't know if that completely answers your question. Okay, I do not currently see any more hands raised. Do we have any further follow-up questions? Hi, Jana, it's me, Susanna Gonzalez from Telemundo. I can't raise my hand on my screen, but I have a question for the officials. Do we know how many people um, would have to be vaccinated in the county every day to try to reach full immunity you know, by the end of this year? Uh, we have not made that calculation, but one thing I can tell you is that right now, the uh, number of uh, vaccines that we're getting on a weekly basis is a limiting factor. And so uh, we're hoping that um, in the coming months that that will increase and that we'll be able to get more people vaccinated. Thank you. We have another question from Chris Hagan from CAP Radio. Thank you. Um, and yeah, following up on the, um, the mass vaccination site in uh, South Sacramento, I wonder um, if there was any more details on what the timing might be for that or if there's been any discussion of a possible location. We're still working out that detail. Um, so, so please stay tuned. Um, our team is wor are working diligently to try to get it up as soon as possible. But once there's more information and confirmation, we'll definitely share that. Okay, Chelsea. Um, is there any update on the mobile vaccine clinics that were discussed a couple of weeks ago in city council? The mobile vaccine is uh, one of the strategies that we definitely want to be able to use during this process. Uh, we are actually using it to a, a limited extent when we're doing outreach in the homeless uh, shelters and um, also the encampments. And also we have used it in um, being able to do uh, vaccinations to some of the farm workers. We feel that um, it will ramp up a lot more, especially as we get more vaccine available to us. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Oh, Chelsea, go ahead. Last one for me. Um, are there any changes that you, the county sees that we've made in the pandemic that could continue after this is all done with? Um, I, I'm not sure that I, I get your question. Are you asking what uh, permanent changes we think are going to occur in Sacramento? Yes. Um, I, I think a lot of that is still to be seen, but I know that in discussions with a lot of the businesses and workplaces, one of the areas where there's a lot of discussion is about uh, telecommuting because that is something that we depended on very heavily uh, during this period of time. 
So um, I, I know that many businesses are looking at that, especially those that are office-based and looking at models that um, they can use moving forward even after uh, we open up completely. Um, I, and I, I think also in terms of changes, um, especially for gatherings as, um, and the large gatherings, I think there will still be some modifications for quite a while because so long as we do have the threat of the virus, we still need to have some level of precautions. I have one more like I can add to that too. I, I, I think one of the things that we've um, learned through this is the use, usage of technology. Um, and so for example, we've done some automated outreach for case investigation and contact tracing. And potentially that's something that we'll explore more in public health for other um, emerging infectious diseases. Okay, I think that that is a good place to stop. Um, thank you guys all for joining us. As with last week, this recording will be emailed out to you um, probably within the hour. And we will see you again next Thursday for our weekly briefing. Thank you.